Hey guys, we have a new article. Um, this article comes from LiveScience.com. And most of California's big earthquakes are preceded by ghostly four shocks weeks in advance. So we're going to go over here and we're going to put this on the earth here. And it says four shocks, the tiny, sometimes imperceptible tremors that precede massive earthquakes are way more common than we thought. How do earthquakes begin? It's an ancient question, and while scientists have ruled out vengeful gods blamed over the past few millennia, agreeing with tremors, agreeing that tremors are more a matter of grinding plate tectonics than a Poseidon's wrath, many facets of this seismic puzzle remain murky. One ongoing mystery is the phenomenon of foreshocks, small, sometimes imperceptible tremors that can precede larger quakes in the same area by several days or weeks. Studies have found that anywhere from 10% to 50% of large earthquakes follow these mini shocks. This has led many researchers to wonder whether foreshocks are a geophysical fluke or a standard feature of big quakes that modern instruments just aren't sensitive enough to detect with certainty. A study published July 30th in the journal Geophysical Letters Research Letters offers compelling new evidence for the second hypothesis. Using the most comprehensive catalog of earthquake activity in Southern California ever assembled, a team of researchers found that roughly 72% of large magnitude 4.0 or greater quakes in the region between 2008 and 2017 followed distinct foreshocks that hit up to a month before the event. We're hoping that these observations will help inform improved physical models of how earthquakes get started. Lead study author Daniel Trugman, a seismologist at Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico, told Live Science, with this improved physical understanding, we'll eventually be able to improve earthquake forecasting as well. Trugman and his colleagues began their hunt for foreshocks by compiling a catalog of some 284,000 earthquakes detected by various monitoring stations around Southern California between 2008 and 2017, using a technique called Quake Template Matching, or QTM. The researchers trained a computer to recognize the distinct waveform these quakes created, then scoured the records for hints of smaller quakes showing those same vibrational patterns, hints that lay hidden in the constant rumbling background or noise of Earth. The team turned up more than 1 million additional earthquakes, many of them magnitude 0.0, .0 or less. Seismologists measure earthquakes magnitudes on a logarithmic scale, so a magnitude 0.0, .0 quake would be about 10,000 times weaker than a magnitude 4.0 quake. In total, the researchers expanded their catalog to include 1.81 million earthquakes, or an average of one quake every three seconds over the past 10 years, Trugman said. From this expanded list, the researchers picked 46 quakes with magnitude 4.0 or higher to study for foreshock activity. But first, the team had to calculate the average number of earthquakes near each fault line in Southern California. If you pick any point in Earth's crush, especially near an active fault zone, there's going to be a background rate of seismicity, Trugman said. To show that there are foreshocks, you have to demonstrate that there are more earthquakes than you would expect leading up to a larger event. To the larger event. Armed with these seismic averages, the researchers showed a statistically significant increase in foreshock activity shortly before 33 of the 46 big quakes. Foreshock activity spiked anywhere from 3 to 35 days before a main shock hit, with an average increase in rumbling occurring about 16 days before the big event. The results suggest that foreshock occurrence in nature is more prevalent than previously thought, the researchers conducted in their study. And what about the 28% of quakes that lacked a surge in foreshock activity, Trugman said. It is likely that many of those quakes did see foreshocks as well, but the researchers just couldn't define them with 99% accuracy. There are a number of cases where there is an increase in seismic activity, but we're not sure it's statistically significant, Trugman said. A seismic monitoring equipment improves, so too should foreshock detection, he said. Still, Trugman added, some of the big quakes clearly missed such a spike in foreshock before the heavy rumbling began. And on the flip side, a vast majority of the tiny quakes he and his team discovered did not precede large earthquakes at all, meaning that simply seeing an increase in seismic activity along a given fault line is not a reliable predictor of bigger earthquakes to come. What we show in this paper is that most, if not all, 
main shocks are preceded by elevated seismic activity that cannot be explained as simple background seismicity, Trugman said. But that is a very different statement from saying that most upticks in seismic seismicity are four shocks that signal that a main shock is impending. This all shows that the processes that initiate earthquakes are quite variable, Trugman said, reminding us that seism seismologists are still a good ways away from being able to forecast earthquakes with any certainty. Perhaps we shouldn't let Poseidon off the hook yet, after all. Anyways, you guys, if you enjoyed this article, please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you're having a great day or night wherever you are in the world. Much love.